happy 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 new month of september we thank the lord for his faithfulness in our life in the month of august i welcome you by the special grace of god by the mercy of god to the month of september of 2021 and i pray that the good lord will preserve our lives if it is coming and I also pray that if paraventure in this month of September, the rapture sound, I pray that none of us will miss heaven in Jesus' name. I wish everyone the best of the month in this month of September. And here we are again in our one message a day in this month of September. We are going to be looking at a very important topic title in the light of eternity see as a christian as a child of god everything we do on earth must be in the light of eternity and i pray that nothing will take that fat away from us in jesus name before we go on let us pray father we thank you lord we worship you <clears throat> we give thanks O lord for thou art a faithful god thank you jesus for the month of september i pray that this month will be a month of blessing a month of healing a month of faith a month of progress a month of auction and divine anointing in the name of jesus father as you have used our gs pastor wf Kumuyi, of Deep Alive Bible Church to bless us towards the end of August from the 26th to the 31st with the program that just ended Divine Touch. I pray that the Divine Touch of God in the lives of your people all over the world, those that have been blessed, let their blessing be permanent in Jesus' name. And those that are still looking up unto you for one thing or the other, let them be blessed in jesus name father we pray that you will help everyone O oh lord to be in the light of eternity as they run as we all run the race on earth that we will not forget that on earth is a momentary period a season and that we have a goal to meet our redeemer Father, help us in Jesus' name. We are covered with the blood of Jesus. Keep us, Lord, from all arrows of the evil ones, from all powers of darkness, from all manipulation and hypnotism from the kingdom of darkness. We we'll pray that this month will be a month of breakthrough for everyone looking up unto you in Jesus' name. This month, do your people good in Jesus' name. Bless us, Lord, as we come again to look at your word and to hear from you. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. We thank the Lord for this month, and I pray that as this message is coming forth, it will come forth with divine auction and anointing in Jesus' name. Again, welcome to the month of September. We are looking at this title in the light of eternity and i will be starting by the special grace of god as the lord leads with a song titled where will you spend eternity in the light of eternity where will you spend eternity remain blessed where will you spend eternity these questions comes to you and me tell me what shall your answer be where will you spend eternity 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 where will you spend eternity? Many are choosing Christ today, turning 
from all their sins away. Heaven shall their people shall be. Where will you spend eternity? Eternity, eternity. Where will you spend eternity? Live in the straight and narrow way. Go in the down world road today. Sad with their final end in be lost through a long eternity. Eternity. Eternity lost through a long eternity. Repent, believe this very hour. Trust in the Savior's grace and power. Then will your joy, your answer be set through a long eternity, 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 saved through a long eternity. Eternity, eternity, save through a long eternity. My brethren, my brothers, my sisters, my friends, my families, my loved ones, I don't know, should I say, anyone that has taken me as an enemy? The question comes to whoever you are today. And the question comes to you. Where will you spend eternity? In the light of eternity, the great judgment morning is drawing nigh. Everything will think we are heaping up for ourselves while we dwell on it we should not forget anything that has to be done about our end year on earth when the bible speak of eternal life it refers to a gift of god a gift that we receive from god that comes only through jesus christ our lord let us read Romans chapter 6, verse 23. Romans chapter 6, verse 23. Romans chapter 6, verse 23. It reads, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. The gifts its contrast to the death that is the natural result of sin. The gift of eternal life, it comes to those who believe in Jesus Christ, who in himself, the resurrection is the resurrection and also is the life. Let us read John chapter 11 verse 25. John 11 25 it reads jesus said unto her i am the resurrection and the life he that believeth in me though he were dead yet 
shall he live. Though he were dead, yet shall he live. Why right here, Jesus testified that he is the resurrection and he is the life. Mary and Martha, they also testify of him. Jesus raises Lazarus from the dead. Caiaphas um, also speak prophetically about the death of Jesus. Jesus is the, is the life that we all need. He is the life, is the resurrection. The fact that the life that we have in Christ is internal life is internal is something that we cannot but look into is something that we cannot but talk about because this indicates that it is a perpetual life it goes on and on with no end and also that is the life of human beings even after death it is not the end of a man after death there is life and that life is called internal life. That is why we cannot but look at this topic in the light of eternity. In the light of eternity. The Bible represents a clear path to eternal life. First, we must recognize that we have sinned against God. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. That is in Romans chapter 3, verse 23. We have all done things that are displeasing to God, which makes us deserving of punishment. Since all our sins are ultimately against an eternal God, only an eternal punishment is sufficient for human race. That is why the Bible said in Romans chapter 6, verse 23, that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. It is a mistake, however, to view eternal life as simply an unending progression of years. A common New Testament word for eternal life you know, it's, it's um, I own it, which carries the idea of quality as well as quantity. In fact, internal life is not really associated with maybe yes at all. It is independent of time. Internal life can function outside of and beyond time as well as within time. For this reason, eternal life can be thought of something that Christians experience even now while we are yet on earth. Believers don't have to wait for eternal life because it is not something that starts when we die. Rather, eternal life begins the moment a person exercises their faith in Christ. It is our current possession. John chapter 3, verse 36, it says, Whoever believes in the Son of God has eternal life. Note that the believer they have, which is they has, which is present time. Let us read John chapter 3, verse 36. John, open your Bible along with me to John chapter 3, verse 36. John chapter 3 verse 36. I just don't want to summarize that place. I want you to read it and see. John 3 verse 36. It says, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life. But the wrath of God abideth on him. But the wrath of God abideth on him. So in our current possession, it means who, whoever believe in the Son of God, you see, at everlasting life, at everlasting life, that's a present tense right there. This life 
you know like this life that it says we have this life is the verb is present tense in the greek too in the greek you can see it has also been present tense we also find similar present tense construction in john chapter 5 verse 24 open your bible along with me to john chapter 5 verse 24 john chapter 5 verse 24 and it says verily verily i say unto you he that heareth the word he that heareth my word and believeth on me that sent me at everlasting life have you seen he that heareth my word he that hears the word of god and believeth on jesus and believeth on jesus you see and you see let me read it again verily verily i say unto you he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me at everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation but is passed from death to life verily verily i say unto you he that heareth my word that's jesus he that heareth my word and believeth on him him is god that sent me that means god sent jesus into the world to die for our sin he said had everlasting life that means you begin presently you begin to have everlasting life once you give your life to christ and he says and shall not come into condemnation that means you are no longer into condemnation once you receive christ in your life you are beginning to to journey in the light of eternity running a race to meet god running a race to heaven running a race to meet your redeemer that is why he says but it's passed from death to life so the person is no longer going from condemnation or death in hell to you know now you are in life you are enjoying you are beginning to enjoy the race that you have chosen to to uh, to accept the lord jesus christ into your life and you are no longer condemned you are no you have passed now from death to life you have passed now from death to life also in john chapter 6 verse 47 we see a similarity also in john chapter 6 verse 47 it says verily verily i say unto you he that believeth on me at everlasting life can you see he that believeth on god at everlasting life so it's a present tense once you believe on god you begin to have that everlasting life so your eternity your you know in the light of eternity you are beginning to journey with the lord the focus of eternal life is not on our future but on our current standing in christ on our current standing in in christ the bible in a strict inextricably links internal life with the person of jesus christ john chapter 17 verse 3 john 17 verse 3 john 17 verse 3 john 17 verse 3, 17, John 17, verse 3 it also says to us and this is life internal that they might know thee the only true god and jesus christ that's the son of god whom thou art sent you see god had sent jesus christ into the world for us so that we will not be condemned so that we can go from death to life we can go from death to life this is an important passage in this regard as jesus prays now this is eternal life that they know you the only true god and jesus christ whom you have sent yeah yeah in this john chapter 17 verse 3 jesus equates internal life with a knowledge of god and of the son of god there is no knowledge of god without the son of god and the son of god is jesus christ for it is through the son of god that the father revealed himself to the elect you see god revealed himself to the elect through his son jesus christ john chapter 17 verse 6 it says to us i have manifested 
thy name unto the men which thou givest me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou givest them me, and they have kept thy word. That is Jesus Christ, you know, telling God, He has He has revealed, He has revealed to us. You see, He said, I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou give which thou givest me out of the world. God gave it us to Jesus out of the world. He said, Thine they were, we are of God, and thou givest them me, and they have kept thy word. But the question is, are you keeping the word of God? Are you keeping the word of God? In the light of eternity, you cannot afford to just mess around with your life and act like once you leave this world, like everything ends just there. No, everything does not end just there. John chapter 14, verse 9. John 14, 9 says, Jesus said unto, unto him, Have I been so long time? John chapter 14, verse 9. Jesus said unto him, Have I been so long time with you? And yet, as thou not know me, Philip, he that hath seen me hath seen the Father, that's God. And how seest thou then? Shew us the Father. See, verse 10. Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and that and and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the work. Believe me that I I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very word's sake. Verily, verily, I say unto you. Now, that's John chapter 14, verse 12. He says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he also do. The great and greater works than this shall he do, because I go unto my Father. I go unto my father. You see, God, you, God has given us Jesus Christ. And we can see that we need for us to be able to have, you know, eternal life, not to have condemnation, not to have death, but to have life. You see, we need to believe on the Son of God. This life-giving knowledge of the Father and the Son of God who is Jesus Christ is very true it is a personal knowledge not just an academic awareness there will be some on judgment day who had claimed to be followers of Christ but never really had a relationship with him don't be among those that are follower of Jesus Christ but in their daily walk in life they don't really have a relationship with Christ. To those false prophets, Jesus will say, I never knew you. Away from me, ye evil doers. You can see that in Matthew chapter 7, verse 23. The apostle Paul made it his goal to know the Lord, and he linked that knowledge to resurrection from the dead. I want to know Christ. Yes, to know the power of his resurrection and participation in his suffering, becoming like him in his death, and so somehow attaining to the resurrection from the dead. That was the yearning of Apostle Paul when he was on earth. Is that your yearning also? You can see that in Philippians chapter 3, verse 10 to 11. In the New Testament, also Apostle John sees a river flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb, and on each side of the river stood the tree of life, and the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the of the nation. You can see that in Revelation chapter 22, verse 1 to 22. In Eden, we rebelled against God and were banished from the tree of life. You can see that in Genesis chapter 3, verse 24. In the end, God graciously restores our access to the tree of life. The access is only provided to us through Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, who take away 
the sin of the world. You can see that in John chapter 1 verse 29. Right now, every sinner is invited to know Christ and to receive eternal life. Let the one who is thirsty come, and let the one who wishes, who wishes take the free gift of the water of life. You can see that in Revelation chapter 22 verse 17. How can you know that you have eternal life? First of all, confess your sin before our holy God. Then accept God's provision of a Savior on your behalf. Everyone who call on the name of the Lord will be saved. You can see that in Romans chapter 10 verse 13. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, died for your sin and he rose again the third day. Believe this good news. Believe it. Trust the Lord Jesus as your personal Savior and you will be saved. You can see that in Acts chapter 16 verse 31 and Romans chapter 10 verse 9 to 10. John, John, Apostle John, John put it so simply. God has given us eternal life. And this, is, this life is in the Son of God. Whoever has the Son of God has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. And remember, the Son of God is Jesus Christ. You can see that in 1 John chapter 5, verse 11 to 12. However, Jesus Christ, the sinless, who had died on the cross of Calvary for the sin of the old world, is calling you today. And you can see that in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 22. Jesus Christ is the sinless. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 22 is also the internal son of god who became man you can see that in john chapter 1 verse 1 and in verse 14 and he died to pay for our penalty he died on the cross of calvary for us you can see that in john chapter 3 verse 16 god demonstrates his love for us in this while we were still sinners christ died for us. You can see that in Romans chapter 5 verse 8. Jesus Christ died on the cross of Calvary for me and you. You can see that in John chapter 19 verse 31 to 42. Taking the punishment that we deserve, he took it for us and he died in our place. You can see that in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 21. But three days later, Christ rose from the dead. You can see that in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1 to 4. Proving his victory over sin and death. In his great mercy, he has given us new births into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. You can see that in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. By faith, we must change our mindset regarding Christ, who he is, what he did, and why for salvation of human race. You can see that in Acts chapter 3 verse 19. If we place our faith in him, that's Jesus Christ, trusting his death on the cross of Calvary to pay for our sins, we will be forgiven and receive the promise of eternal life to dwell with him in heaven. And for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son so that anyone who believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. That is in John 3.16. If you confess with your mouth this day that Jesus is Lord and you believe in your heart, that God raised him from the dead. You will be saved. You can see that in Romans chapter 10 verse 9. Faith alone in your heart that God raised him from the dead will allow you to also accept Christ. That faith in your heart will also 
lets you alone in your heart will let you know the finished work of Christ on the cross is the only true path to eternal life. For it is by grace that you have been saved through faith. And this is not of yourself. It is not ours, of ourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works so that anyone can boast. You can see that in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 to 9. Finally, my brethren, if you want to accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, here is a simple prayer. Just go on your feet or on your knees or wherever position you can take that is comfortable for you. Remember, saying this prayer or any other prayer will not save you. It is only trusting in Christ that can save you from sin. This prayer is a simple way to express to God your faith in Him and thank Him for providing for your salvation. You are going to say, God, I know that I have sinned against you and I deserve the punishment. But Jesus Christ took the punishment that I deserve so that through faith in Him, I could be forgiven. I place my trust in you for salvation. And then at this point, you confess your sin. Whatever sin you have sinned against God. After your confession, thank God for his wonderful grace and forgiveness. And for giving you the gift of eternal life. Amen. My brethren, as we round up today, have you made the decision for Christ because of what you have heard today? If so, please accept Christ today by giving your life to Jesus Christ. Determine in your heart to sin no more and abstain from all appearances of sin and evil. Look for a sound Bible-believing church of God and start going there to develop your faith and growth in Christ. With the grace of God upon your life, ask God to keep you in the hours of, of, of temptation. Again, I'll repeat that sentence. With the grace of God upon your life, ask God to keep you in the hours of temptation. And I pray that the good Lord will help us to always remember that all we do should be in the life in the light of eternity let us pray father we thank you for today's ministration we pray that we will be the doers of your word not the hearers only and not the speaker only in jesus name help your people lord anyone that has determined in their heart at this point that they want to accept you into their life and they want to run this race of eternal life as they confess their sin lord please forgive them in jesus name write our names lord in the book of life dear lord and please lord blot out our name out of the books of books and at the rapture sound none of us will be left behind in jesus name we also pray and ask thee dear heavenly father that you will please help us that none of us will die and go to hellfire in Jesus' name. We will not die unprepared for eternity. We will not die suddenly in Jesus' name. Give unto us, Lord, abundant life. John, um, Psalm chapter 91 verse 16 says that you will satisfy us with long life and show us our salvation. Please, Lord, satisfy us with long life and give us your salvation in Jesus' name. Your word also says that you wish above all things that our soul prosperate and be in good health. As you are blessing us with long life, let our soul to prosper. Let our spirit and body to prosper. Let us to prosper numerically, financially, spiritually in the Lord in all aspects of our life that we will fulfill destiny in Jesus' name. And it also says that we will be in good health. Give us good and perfect health in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you. We worship you. We bless, we honor, and adore your only name. 
Great is thy faithfulness, dear Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We use this medium to pray for the fatherless, the motherless, the orphans, the widow, the widowers, the homeless, and those that are looking up unto you for healing. Everyone, O oh Lord, the single parents that are struggling to meet the ends meet of their children. Everyone, O oh Lord, I pray that your mercy, your love, and your protection will be with each and every one and provide for the needs of your people in Jesus' name. Even for the couples, I pray you will have your way in their life. For the single brothers and single sisters that are looking up unto you for the bone of their bone, the flesh of their flesh. Father, I pray that no one will marry a wrong partner in Jesus' name. Anyone that is already into courtship, that you don't have your will in, I pray your mercy will not allow them to be derailed. Your love will pull them out of such courtship and you will put them on the path of your perfect will for their life in Jesus' name. And those that are still expecting that you will bring their partner to them, answer their prayers, O Lord. For our students that are in the university, in college, in secondary school, in primary school, our children, Lord, we pray success galore will be everyone's portion. They will come out in flying colors to the glory of your name in Jesus' name. In all we do, O oh Lord, while on earth, help us to remember that it's all vanity and help us to always pursue righteousness, holiness, purity, eternal life. Always remember, to always remember that all we do while still on earth should be in the light of eternity in jesus name thank you precious father we are covered with the blood of jesus pray for us beyond that which we can ask for oh lord it is well with our spirit souls and body in jesus mighty name we strongly believe and have prayed amen 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 so thank you very much for those that are joined for those that will be listening feel free to be sharing these messages if it's a blessing to you feel free to share to others so that it will be a blessing to others stay blessed and the good lord be with each and every one of us till another time again remain blessed in the lord god bless you